spring game for your Alabama Crimson Tide. You're rocking and rolling right now, the hottest show in the streets. Giving you your Bama football news. In my own words, you're truly Stephen Smith of TDA. I know normally we have the show later in the day, 6.30 Central Time here in studio, but special A-Day edition of the show. Wanting to do this rightly, giving it to you early. We bring you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. Uh, we stream this through YouTube. Speaking of the channel, you know what time it is. Get subscribed, get hooked up, get locked on to nothing else better than this spot right here to get all things Bama. You don't wanna miss out on anything. Uh, subscribe right here. In my own words, touch the Alabama magazine. You hit that like button as well. Drop a like on the show. Smash the like button. Hit that thumbs up. Get those like levels up. Trying to get this 50 likes out the gate here to start the show. We appreciate that. That daily super chat go $100. Daily super chat go 100 bucks right there. We want to thank you, the Alabama football fan base, for rocking with us. We have a lot to get to. Quite a few things to discuss. Kane and DeBoer switching stuff up in the spring game. You got Alabama targeting two positions here. When you look at the transfer portal, you know, Parker Browsford, the transfer center that came over from Washington. Coach DeBoer, a positive update on him. Gonna get into all of that. We want your calls today. Line us up in the phone lines. You can do this 205 448 1358 for number to call in to let your voice be made known on the show. 205 448 1358. One more time 205 448 1358. We want to hear from every last one of you. And right now, drop this in the comment section and also call in to talk about this. What's the most exciting part you're ready to see tomorrow the most the most exciting part of a day because it's, it's tomorrow the most exciting part of a day you're ready to see drop that in the comment section fans call in talk about it we're in a brand new era tomorrow starts the Kalen DeBoer era for the first time since 06 you're not seeing Nick Saban as the head man walking the sideline new dude what are you looking forward to seeing from DeBoer, his staff, this team, 8 tomorrow? Drop that in the comment section right there, also calling in. But we're getting the topic number one here, Ian, uh, of the conversation. Kang and DeBoer switching some stuff up here. Now, the good news is uh, he's not changing the theme song Alabama comes out to. So he's still keeping Thunderstruck. That's still happening. Thunderstruck by ACDC. He's still keeping that as the team's walkthrough song when they when they walk on the walk of champions to get inside the stadium. And then once they take the field, you no know, Thunderstruck is still going to be there. So he's not changing that. But there are some aspects that have been altered in terms of the spring game. The big one here, Eli, is the A-Day format in terms of the roster. In the 17 years with Coach Saban, we got so used to the Friday before the spring game. So today, we got so used to having the A-Day roster out, right? Under Nick Saban, we grew accustomed to the Friday before the spring game, uh, the roster would come out and you would have Team White versus Team Crimson, right? Team White would be the first team offense against uh, uh, and it'll be the first team offense and the second team defense would represent team white versus team crimson it would be the second team offense and the first team defense that's how they would split it up there and they would both go battle go compete against each other on the field inside brian denny we would all get the roster and we would be just gung-ho happy about okay that guy's on team white that guy's on team crimson that guy's on the first team, that guy's on the second team. Like, we kind of got a gist of that, and we got accustomed to that because that's how Saban did it for 17 years. That is no more. You're, no more Team White, no more Team Crimson. Uh, Kang and DeBoer spoke yesterday, 
It's just going to be offense versus defense. He likes to look at it as a 15th practice. There'll be some scrimmaging going on. You know, there's an opportunity for offense and defense to both score points. It's different. And upon seeing this, a lot of you as the Bama Nation kind of thought like me. And we're like, DeBoer, like, what is this? Like, this is weird. Like, no team white, no team crimson. Like, that's that's kind of a tradition you want to keep. Like, what's up with this mumbo jumbo? Like, well, what is this? So we, we, we look at that and we immediately get hit with this doesn't feel right because under Saban, we were used to, okay, we get a roster. We see who's on the roster. We see who Team White is. We see who Team Crimson is. It's broken down plainly for us. It's spoon fed for us. And we know the winner gets that steak dinner because that's how Saban conditioned us for 17 years. Whoever the winner is, you get that steak dinner. Whoever the loser is, they get the beans and hot dogs. Beanies and weenies, right? That's how we were conditioned for 17 years. Now, is the steak and beans and hot dogs still a thing? The players still want that to continue? We will see if it comes into fruition on Saturday, tomorrow. But the players want the steak and hot dogs and bean can, uh, tradition to continue. But what's kind of got us thrown off a bit is no more Team White, no more Team Crimson. We're just looking at offense, defense. So, Eli, here's my theory. And I could be wrong, but part of my job in providing you, the Alabama football fans, this information is compiling theories to things that don't make sense to help bring some sense to this, right? So here's my theory, Eli. And, and, and you can agree, Eli, if you feel like this with me. If you feel something else, Eli, feel free to interject. So it, it, here's my thought here. I think how Kang and DeBoer is trying to do this is the first team offense would have Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson split reps. And then, and then everybody else when you talk Dylan Lauren again and Austin Mack, they would split with like the twos and the threes. I, I could see it that way. But like the first team would be Jangan and Ty. Now, would you give them a quarter each? Would, you, would, they, would they get like a few series each? I don't know. But I think the first team offense would be kind of Jangan and Ty splitting that. And then the second team and third team would be Dylan Lorna getting an Austin Mack. That's how I kind of see that. And uh, I, I guess defensively, everybody would kind of rotate in to get time. Everybody would kind of rotate in to get action because, once again, Kang and DeBoer is not dividing the team. He, he's already said that. He's not dividing the team. He's not splitting things up. It's just going to be offense versus defense. We don't know how that looks. Until we see it on the field, I kind of see it as does all, or it could be like this. Could it be like this, Eli? Could, could, could every quarterback play with the first team and it's just each quarterback gets a quarter? Could it be that? Could it be like Jalen Milrow gets the first quarter, Ty Simpson gets the second quarter, Dylan Lorne gets the third quarter, Austin Mack takes the fourth quarter, and they evaluate that way? I mean, maybe that makes some sense. I'm just trying to make some sense out of it. I mean, that makes some sense. But th th that's just one of the alterations uh, Kang and DeBoer made, right? You know, you're not seeing Team White. You're not seeing Team Crimson. Just offense versus defense. But... You know, uh, can Coach DeBoer have the effect he, wanna, that he wants to have in this A-Day game is the main question. Even with having this alteration, right? Even with us walking into a stadium tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Time, kickoff for A-Day, and for the first time, it's not Nick Saban at the controls doing this. It's somebody different. What will the effect be? Like, how packed will Bryant-Denny be tomorrow? 
You have some people that feel like you may see 30,000, you may see 40,000. You have others that feel like, no, it's going to be 70 to 80,000. People are going to support DeBoer. And then some, and then there's, there's, there's a small remnant that feels like, yo, like we gave Saban that love in 08 with 90,000. And we saw what happened with that, right? Like six national championships came off that, right? We got to show the poor that same love. Let's get 90 to 100,000 folks in there. You have a small remnant that feel that way. So can the poor have that right effect in his first spring game as the Crimson Tides head football coach? Will this all work? This offense versus defense is no splitting of teams, no division of teams. Going to be interesting. Who could end up being the offensive MVP or the defensive MVP of a spring game? That's something else to drop in the chat line. Folks, write in your offensive and defensive MVP of the spring game. Absolutely. We're going we're to take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that down. We're just getting started here, folks. When we get back, I want your thoughts. How do you think about this? Is DeBoer doing this right? How do you think his effect will be on this game? We'll get to your thoughts after this. Touchdown Alabama is a fully independent outlet that covers all things Alabama football. Founded in 2007 when Nick Saban arrived, we have been here through the entire Nick Saban era. In this new era, now is the perfect time to stay up to date on everything Alabama football and know what's going on, including everything that's going on with recruiting. Our website at touchdownalabama.com will always keep you in the know on everything that's going on with the Crimson Tide. You can also get breaking news notifications with our app. We have over 100,000 followers on Facebook, over 60,000 on Twitter, nearly 30,000 on Instagram, over 30,000 on TikTok, and we're constantly growing. Also, be sure to become a part of this rapidly growing venture and subscribe to TouchdownAlabama.com to get inside and premium information on the team as well as recruiting inside the state of Alabama. We are constantly adding to our premium subscription package, so be sure to lock in now. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. What's up, what's up, everybody? It's the eve of the A-Day game tomorrow. 3 p.m. Central Time kickoff from Bryant Denny. We're rocking and rolling with you to the action from the break. In my own words, hottest show on the streets here covering Bama. Yours truly, Stephen Smith. My man, Eli Walker in the production studio. Spring game is tomorrow. Kang and DeBoer not dividing teams. No more Team White. No more Team Crimson Sad. Eli, do I got a bottle of Sprite so I can pour out in memory of Team White, Team Crimson? Not going to have that? No! I'm not going to have that, but we're going to see how DeBoer does this. We're going to go to the phone lines to grab your calls. Call statement brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. 205-448-1358. Number to call in. 205-448-1358. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feel? And state your name and where you calling from. Christian Ballard, your boy Chris with Ballard Sports Media. It's been a minute, Steve, and Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Chris. Happy to have you in here, man. It's the eve of A-Day tomorrow, the spring game from Tuscaloosa. There's been some alterations here from Coach DeBoer, but we'll still get a chance to see – but talent on the field, just in a different format than what we're used to. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I've really missed your show, man, like for real. And But getting into A-Day, I think we need to support Coach DeBoer, how he wants to do things. I think as long as he doesn't change things up completely, I mean, it's not like he's going in and messing with 
you know, the fall schedule or anything like that yet. I mean, this is, it, it's spring practice. It, it's basically a live version for us to see spring practice and how things have gone. I support DeBoer. I know that he, you know, is changing some things up with how he's going to run things for the spring game, at least to see how it goes this year. But I support him. And, you know, I know a lot of people out there are traditionalists and love what we had under Nick Saban. But we got to give this guy a chance and see how he runs things. And um, as far as the game tomorrow goes, I will be going with some friends of mine. It'll be my first time going to the spring game at least. And, um, you know, I, I I think the biggest thing I want to watch is, number one, just at the top of the list, how's the offensive line? Because we got some transfers in there like Parker, what's his name, Brailsford. And we have a couple guys coming back, some young guys. I, I want to see how that O-line has improved to help guys at the quarterback position like Jalen Milrow. How's it going to look tomorrow? Also, I'm curious about some of the guys in the secondary. Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing both of those things, Chris. And then I guess for me, the main thing my eyeballs will be on is definitely the kicker situation. After five years with Will Reichert and the consistency that he brought the program with his leg, him moving on to the National Football League, the upcoming draft, the latter portion of this month, you have Connor Talty. You have up you have Upton Belafont along with some other kickers, but you know who takes on that mantle left behind by Will Riker that uh, you never had to worry when he went up to kick a field goal. You just knew the confidence he carried himself with that that kick was going to go through. So my focus will also be on the kicking aspect. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you, especially considering before Riker got there. Uh, back in what was it 2018 he's been there a while um, I mean we ha- it was the Achilles heel of the Nick Saban dynasty was our kicking game and punting and and everything I guess punting wasn't too bad but no nah, I'm excited I think it is going to be Connor Tulsi's job to lose we'll see how he does tomorrow and and everything like that it, it should be pretty good um, I also would throw out the running back situation uh, we got a couple different guys out there especially I I have seen reports I hear even from you guys Justice Haynes is he that dude we'll yeah. see man I, I can't yeah. can't wait I mean he, that, that dude uh, uh power speed vision Haynes has got it all and soft hands uh, really showing the versatility as a pass catcher out the backfield. DeBoer and Nick Sheridan, the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach, they want to get the running backs touching that ball as receivers in the passing game. So, you know, all of the guys at the at the running back room, they can catch the ball. For sure. Steven, I love you guys. A big roll tide from Coleman, and we'll see you at A-Day tomorrow. Have a Absolutely. good day, guys. Absolutely. My man, Chris Ballard, sports media calling in out of Coleman, Alabama to get us started here on a Friday. We're going to grab this call. You're live on the show. What's happening, how we feel, and state your name and where you're calling from. Yo, what's up, man? This is Rob from Jersey, man. What's up? Doing great, man. Doing great. We got the A-Day game tomorrow. I know it's different type of atmosphere, vibe that DeBoer is bringing. Not something that we grew accustomed to in 17 years with Coach Saban, but this is what this is what, this is what it is. You got to go in here, well, support the new staff. Well, I, I, I agree with you 100%, but I just want to announce something real quick. I have touched down in Tuscaloosa from New Jersey. I'm in the building tomorrow. Oh, he's oh, you're here. Oh man, let's go. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Jihad Campbell to come pick me up right now, actually. But I'm down here to support Jihad and and, and Keon Sab. You know, my they my Jersey guys. So uh, yeah, man. But I'm looking forward to this A game, man, because there's some things I need to see. Truthfully, I know everybody focuses on the offensive line and the quarterback. I'm strictly focused on defense because. Offense sell tickets, but defense wins games, man. And we have to have a defense out there. If something sputters on this offense, our defense is going to be able to get them the ball back immediately. And I think so many people putting so much emphasis on offense. Y'all better pay attention to this defense and be, you know, make sure we got all our 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 uh, dots um, dots crossed and t's. I mean, t's crossed and the i's dotted because this defense is going to have to really step up big this season, I believe. 
Rob, Rob, first and foremost, I, I got to give it to you, man. You called Keon Saab to Bama before anybody else did. And since he's been mm-hmm. here, the guy has been tremendous at free safety. I got a chance to talk with Malachi Moore. The connection between Moore and Saab has been really strong. Like, they're really looking at Keon to be that free safety on the back end to, you know, work in tandem with Malachi Moore. Yeah, Keon, Keon told me, he said, yo, Malachi Moore has been one of the best things that he's had coming, transitioning into Alabama. And I give, I give Malachi Moore, he's a true professional already. I really like the way he brought him in and, you know, basically showed him, okay, this is how we do it. This is the way we're going to do it. Da, da, da. He's been magnificent, man. I'm telling you, he's been magnificent. I give that kid a lot of credit, man. Man, and, and, and Rob, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at the spring game. I'm, I was about to, I'm, say, I'm about forward, to say that, man. man. I said, I hope I run I, into I'm you. Looking, I'm I'll looking be... forward, man, to chopping this thing up with you because uh, getting pictures and everything, I'm looking forward to that. Campbell, Jihad Campbell's had an incredible spring. I'm looking forward to seeing what that young man does here on the field. But, Rob, definitely looking forward to chopping it up with you. Absolutely, man. I can't wait. To, I, if I see you, I'm definitely going to pull my, pull your uh, coattail, let you know it's me, and I'm in the building, dog. Absolutely. But looking forward to you, see you tomorrow, guy. All right? Take care, man. Absolutely. Rob from Jersey calling in here. He's in T-Town now. The people are already making their way into Tuscaloosa because they know this is special. First time since 06, a guy not named Nick Saban is walking the sidelines here of a spring game. But we take this call. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feel? And state your name. Where you calling from? Derek, man, how you feeling, man? How's the pulse, man? Tomorrow's the spring game. Oh man, um, I'm really feeling it, man. Um, I, I'm just excited to see what we what what uh what's going to, you know, come out on the field, you know, uh, what product's going to be put out on the field. As far as, um, you know, Debo, uh, Coach Debo uh, uh, changing things up, you know, you got to let the man put a stamp down. You know, I mean, right. uh, you know, there's going to be changes, and, and some are going to be big, some are going to be small, but it's going to be changes. And, and you know, we just got to put ourselves, get behind the man and see what he can do. You know, and I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. I just, I just want to see – Basically, uh, the swarm defense number one, I, and I want to see, you know, the, uh, you know, with how they how they utilize the running backs, you know, catching out of the backfield, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, the most, and just just the product out there, you know, it, all that other stuff, man. That it, it comes, it comes with the, the you know, it, it comes when there's a change, there's going to be changes. So, I'm, I'm whatever, man. I just I just want to see what's going on on the field, man. Absolutely. Appreciate Derek calling in from Omaha, giving us his thoughts here on a Friday. For, for, for me, Ian, I, well, before I get to my point, we're going to grab this next call. You're live on the show. What's happening, how we feel, and state your name, and where you calling from? I'm calling, I'm calling from Georgia. My name is Lucas. Hey, Lucas, how you doing? Good. Hey, don't be worried about the A-Day. It's going to be just fine. But this is, I want to tell you, this is what we need is a change. Because, yes, that's Nick Saban did on, on, on that A day, keep it like the white and the crimson. And, and Coach DeBoer, I love this. I really do. Don't get, I love this because we need this, a change. But the only thing I'm concerned, only, are the players going to eat like steaks or beanie weenies or hot dogs after that? If he takes that away, then I'll be mad. But I'm not mad about this. I'm not. This is what we need. To be honest with you. Yeah, appreciate, that, you know, appreciate that right there from Lucas. This is what we need. The change happening in the building in terms of Coach DeBoer. Now, the players, Elon, the players want the steak, beans, and hot dog tradition to stay. So many players have talked about it. We're going to try to get Coach DeBoer to keep that. Keep that where whoever the winning team is – or the winning group is, they get the steak dinner. Whoever the losing group is, they get the beans and hot dogs because that's the competitive side of it, right? That's the competitive nature. That's the competition. That's the incentive of uh, we go out here, we ball out, we dominate, we win, we get that steak dinner. So the players want to keep that incentive of steak versus the beans and hot dogs. So 
My hope is that that sticks around. I think DeBoer will listen to the players to keep that around. But in terms of just a switch up of not having Team White, Team Crimson, Lucas from Georgia, making a good point there, that not necessarily a big deal. Just make sure the product that you have on the field is a strong product that the fans can get behind. Appreciate Lucas there calling uh, from Georgia, but we're going to go to this call here. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feeling? State your name. Where you calling from? Hey, Steven. It's Tobias out here in the desert of Phoenix, Arizona. How's it going? Man, I'm doing good, man, Tobias. I'm doing fantastic. We got Bama A-Day spring game tomorrow. Coach DeBoer, his first spring game in New Era. I- I'm good. You know what? Before I talk about what to look for, I want to give – I don't know if he listens, but I want to give James Brockemeyer a lot of props. Absolutely. He could have hit that Absolutely. portal. He stayed, and he may end up being a starting center. But also, that's good on Kalen DeBoer because he didn't gift it to Parker Brailsford. So the players could say, hey, competition, okay, he's for real. Because his guy may not start this year, but Brailsford is young, so he could sit a year, it's fine. You know? Uh, but – but I want to give Brock and my credit for that. But, like, we look for – I want to see the defensive line because I'm not going to be too harsh on the offensive line in a spring game because we know Proctor's not going to be back to the fall. You know, Roberts got a sprained ankle, you know. so And we, and we know the offensive line is that they may not be the unit in the fall. Right. Uh, but I also want to – yeah, I want to see the young secondary because there's a lot of talent there. But the only way to get people talking about a lack of experience, but the only way to get it to gain experience is by going out there and doing it. Absolutely, a- absolutely. I-, I I I think for me, Tobias, I want to see the linebacker gr- the linebacker group behind uh, Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell, like the guys behind those yep. two. I I, I want to and see. What- I want to see Keanu Coat. I want to see Keanu Coat. I want to see Quandarius Robinson. I want to see big Jeremiah Alexander. I want to see Quay Russo, Sterling Dixon, these freakish athletes. That's what I want to see. Behind D-Law, behind Campbell, who does Alabama got that can rock the quarterback skull? Like, that's what I want to see. Hey, what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm at work. Flying took off. But – my last thing is, I do want to look at QB, right? Because everyone talking about middle road passing, passing. I never thought passing was as big as efficiency. I thought it was processing, knowing wow. where to go to hot route, get people in and out of the place. I don't, like, I'm no coach or anything, but I don't know if that could be a strength, but I'm fascinated to see. Uh, but, but going with the ones, ones on ones, that's also a good way to evaluate Ty Simpson and maybe Lonergan as well. And I think Max is a developmental guy. He's another year or so away because he came in so young. But it's a good way because everybody's going against the ones. And, uh, and you know, and I want to see if Milrow is able this year to get people in and out of a good bad play to a good play, hitting that, hitting that hot route when the guys are blitzing. Because when defenses blitz you a lot, they don't respect you. And I hope he gains that respect. And I want to see that progress in camp, though. And that's something I'm looking for. But my last thing, Stephen, we may not truly get that until the fall because we know how the spring game is. And especially yeah. the offensive line kind of banged up right now. It's not fair to judge anyone based on that. But, that, but that's the progress I'm really looking for from him because the process is down. The throwing will be a lot better, in my opinion. But you have a good one, Stephen. Appreciate it. My man Tobias calling in out of Phoenix, Arizona. Give us some love here on the show. You guys are calling in early, jumping early. You know, maybe we should switch around this time more often, Eli. We got we, we got this started what at, at one o'clock, and we already got people calling in, getting their thoughts in. So maybe we should do this more. But this is a special edition of, in my own words, the A Day edition. But we got a cool call topic to go to right here. Former Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith, 2020 Heisman Trophy winner, former first-round pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, a two-time 1,000-yard receiver for the Eagles in his first three seasons. Smitty could be looking at a long-term deal pretty soon. The Eagles, Jeff Lurie, Howie Roseman, they have a very aggressive front office. This is a very aggressive organization in terms of getting guys paid. Jalen Hurts got his money, right? Landon Dickerson, 
recently became the highest paid offensive guard in the NFL. So who's next on that list? Devontae Smith. The Eagles love him. They don't want to have this man walk out the door. So the front office of Philadelphia, they're trying to make Smitty one of the highest paid receivers in the league. And that number that they're trying to hit, they're trying to get Smitty in that $25 million a year range. So who's in that $25 million a year range? You got Tyreek Hill in there, who makes $30 million a year for the Miami Dolphins. You got Cooper Cup in there for the Rams. You got Devontae Adams in that range. You got um, uh, you got A.J. Brown, Smitty's teammate in that range. So you got a few of those high-profile wide receivers in that $25 to $30 million a year range. The Eagles want to get Devontae Smith in that category. So they're working on a long-term deal for Smitty. When does that deal happen? We will see once it gets finalized, but that's the conversation right now. Jeff Lurie, Howie Roseman, they're trying to get Smitty locked into a long-term deal. But we're taking another break right here, folks, in the show. I won't touch that down. When we get back, we get into a conversation that Kang and DeBoer had yesterday with the media. Alabama is targeting two positions in the spring portal which opens next Monday. Where are those two positions? We get into it right after this. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh yeah, this. <laughs> Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that band without this shirt right here, fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all pink. Like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts. Shoes, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, Bama Nation, how we feeling? It's the eve of the A-Day game. Spring game tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Time kickoff. Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. The first of the Kane and DeBoer era. Everybody right now making their way to T-Town. Hottest show on the streets right here, the Birmingham area, in my own words, George truly. Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. I'm in Eli Walk in the production room. Eli, for the first time in a while, in some years, in my coverage of Alabama football, I'm not going to the game as a reporter. I know, right? Shocking. I'm going as a fan. So for the first time, I get to see it as fans see it from the fan perspective. This is pretty cool for me. I'll be there with my wife, with my daughter, with my sister-in-law. We're gonna all be taking this in. This is gonna be fantastic, man. But, beginning now, topic two of the conversation here. Kang and DeBoer talked about this on yesterday, and uh, that being Alabama is going to pursue the NCAA transfer portal, the spring portal, when it opens back up Monday, April 15th. Bama is going to pursue the portal. They're looking at two positions in the portal to have their eyeballs on. Uh, DeBoer mentioned he's going to look at the offensive line. He's also going to look at the defensive secondary. Those are the those are the positions that DeBoer mentioned, hey, we will pursue these two in the portal. 
the offensive line and the defensive secondary. Now, the offensive line, I can see why Coach DeBoer would want to do that. You got Jaden Roberts, who is okay. He did get a little you know, banged up there in the second scrimmage prior to the A-Day game on tomorrow. But, you know, Jaden Roberts did get a bit banged up there. If you got Parker Browsford, who will not even play in the A-Day game, but he'll st he's still on the team, not going anywhere. They'll, but uh, he just won't play in the A-Day game. So you got some guys banged up. Uh, you want to have some guys that with, uh, ex with experience that you can trust. That's the reason why you're pursuing the portal here in the, these, after the spring game. Now, the big question that Alabama fans have is, does Caden Proctor truly come back for Tuscaloosa? There was a whole lot of speculation earlier this offseason about, you know, Proctor – Went back to Iowa, transferring from Alabama to the Hawkeyes. He goes back home. He's an Iowa native and home, uh, not what he thought it was cracked up to be. And when the speculation started with, well, Caden Proctor will put himself back in the portal. He'll come back to Alabama. You know, all of that talk was happening. Nothing has transpired since then. Proctor has not put his name in the portal since then. His name has not shown up in the portal since then. So, uh, does he truly make that decision on Monday to put his name in the portal actively and then return to the Crimson Tide? That remains to be seen. All eyes will be on that portal come Monday. Now, if Caden Proctor does do it, and he does come back to Alabama, then uh, the spot there at left tackle will be a competition. And if Caden Proctor wins it back, then at the very least, you have somebody with experience that has played that left tackle spot before in Alabama. That'd be a good thing. If Caden chooses to not come back to Alabama, if he doesn't put his name in the portal to come back to the Crimson Tide, then uh, Elijah Pritchett would take that spot there at left tackle. At that right tackle spot, we've seen growth there from Wilkin Formby throughout the entire spring. He's been getting the reps there, you know, with the one. So Monday will be the day that we'll look at the transfer portal and we'll see once and for all, hey, is Caden Proctor serious about coming back to Alabama or was the speculation just that? Speculation. That's where the offensive line is concerned. But that is a position group that Kangan DeBoer did mention the uh, that Alabama will look at pursuing of a transfer portal to add some experience depth there uh, where the numbers are a concern against that 85-man scholarship roster there. Then when you look at the defensive secondary, Kangan DeBoer mentioned we, we may add a piece, Bama may add a piece or two there as well. Now, defensive secondary, you got a lot of, of guys there. You have guys with experience, Malachi Moore, Devontae Smith has some experience. Jaleel Hurley has got knowledge there of the system. But then you have some transfers. Ke uh, Keon Saab, who's had a great spring. The transfer from Michigan that's playing well at the safety position. You got Damani Jackson, a transfer from, from USC, who's had a great spring playing cornerback. And then you got a whole bunch of just young, uh, talented freshmen. When you talk Red Morgan, who's had a really strong spring, uh, um, Jalen Mbakwe, Xavier Mincy, Xavier Brown, uh, Dre Kirkpatrick Jr., Peyton Woodyard, you know, all those guys have, have excelled for spring. So the secondary is going to be highly intriguing, but that's the other position that King and DeBoer mentioned, hey, uh, we may we may pursue the transfer portal to get somebody that's got that experience depth there or the, or the experience there at that position, you know, playing college football. But those are the two spots, offensive line and defensive secondary, that Alabama will look into the transfer portal to possibly add a piece or two uh, to the roster. But we take another break right here, folks. Don't touch that dial. When we get back, we return to the phone lines. We grab your thoughts. We grab your conversations. We get to you, the Bama Nation, right after this.
every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly. Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, here we go. Back into the action from the break here. Hottest show on the streets. Talking your Bama football news in my own words. Yours truly. Stephen Smith of TDA. I'm in Eli Walk in the production studio. People continue hitting that subscribe button. Tapping that subscribe button. Smashing the like button. Daily super chat go. $100 daily super chat go. 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that coming from all of you. Phone lines open right now, 205-448-1358. And I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard. The show, the the call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. One more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. I know normally do the show Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 630 Central, but special a day edition wanted to get this out to you guys earlier special a day edition of the show right here we appreciate all of you guys checking it out tuning into it but as you're getting your thoughts together to call in here we got an awesome call topic eating now so we got our nfl draft participants for alabama football these are the guys that'll be in the draft room night one of the venue, that being J.C. Latham, Dallas Turner, Terry on Arnold. They will be participating in the NFL draft. They'll be there night one, the event. Latham, Arnold, Turner. All of these three projected first round picks. Kool-Aid McKinstry also projects as a first round pick. Bama can get three to four guys in the first round of the NFL draft. If they can get four guys in here, Eli, that would give Nick Saban, what, 48 first-round picks since oh, since 2011. Yeah, 28, it'll be 48 first-round picks since 2011. It's incredible. Nick Saban, 48 of those. So, uh, yeah, 48 of those. 40, well, 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 hold on, well, hold on, well, hold on. 48 first round picks since 09, my bad. You gotta count Andre Smith in there. So 48 since 09, correct, 48 since 09. So we're looking at, uh, we're looking at Arnold, Latham, Turner will all be there to open up draft night here. We got a portion of this month, be fantastic. We get to the final topic here, people. Not the final topic, but we go take our final break here on the show. When we get back, we get to the final topic of conversation. Kagan DeBoer, positive update on one Parker Browsford. We get into that and wrap things up after this. I'm Malachi Moore, and you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. What's going on? This is Benny Bites. I'm the founder and owner of 
Touchdown Alabama. And you guys are supporting one of the only independent outlets covering Alabama football today. No other sports, no networks, just Alabama football. Roll, tie, roll. All right, people, here we go. Back at the action here from the break. Number one ticket for Bama football news. In my own world, George Truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. Everybody making their way down the title town, Tuscaloosa. Tomorrow's the spring game. Looking forward to checking this out, meeting some people, shaking some hands. Eli, you going to be at A-Day? Eli, I may hook up with you, man. Maybe you and I and the rest of the family. We can go to Rama Jamas before A Day. Get some meal or something. Yeah. Yeah, get some meal. Well, of course, Eli, you're going to be working the sideline. See, I, I, I will be there as a fan. You're going to be there actually getting the action and working the sideline. So, well, maybe before the game, they try to. Hit up Rama Jamas, get some food. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a food guy. A little pancake, a little, uh, little burger, you know, Texas toast. <laughs> do something. We, 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 we may do something there. But into the final topic here, folks, of conversation on the show. And so, Kang and DeBoer Thursday was able to give us an update on one Parker Browsford, the transfer from Washington on the offensive line, playing the center position. Uh, Browsford, he's okay, doing well, going through some non-football type things, but he's still with the team, uh, not transferring, sticking around, uh, though uh, not going to be the starting center. That's going to be James Brockermeyer, but to still have Parker Browsford around, big thing there. He will not play on a day. Coach DeBoer said, don't expect him to be out there for the A-Day game. They're not going to push him for the spring game. So, Browsford will not play in the spring game. But, he's still on the team. Not transferring. Still going to be out there working through some non-football related things. But, when you look at fall camp and the coming season in the fall, he'll be there. Parker Browsford will be there. So, that's the good news. Good news is, uh, not going anywhere, not leaving, not transferring, still staying with the Crimson Tide, though he's working through just some some small things. He's working through just some small, non-football-related aspects here. So, that's good there. Uh, he's going to remain here with the team. But, I mean, folks, I mean, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this office is going to look. How this defense is going to look, how special teams is going to look, how many players will pack out the stadium, um, just, just just the whole newness of it all. And I think Coach Saban will be there. I think Saban and Miss Terry will be there. I think they'll have a box somewhere. I think Saban will still have on a clean suit. I think Saban going to be there. I think the entire Saban family going to be there. Yes, it'll be in a different light, no longer coaching, but taking this in as a fan. But I think the Saban family will be there full on. I think they will. I, I, I know Kristen Saban, Kristen has already said she's going to be there. So if Kristen's going to be there, you got to feel like Coach Nick and Miss Terry, they're going to find their way in there. They're going to find their way in there. To support the program, to support the King and DeBoer era. So that's going to be outstanding. Of course, I'll be there. Fans, find me. Flag me down. I'll be there for conversations. You know, I'll be right there. Pictures, you know, I'll be there right there. But it's going to be, fun. It's going to be a fun atmosphere. As always, though, Bama Nation, you want the best in news, notes, coverage, material entertainment on your favorite program that being the crimson tie you can get this by accessing the touchdown alabama magazine app you download the app from the iphone app store if you're rocking team apple google play store if you got the android phone for your audio needs check this out itunes or apple podcast spotify stitcher spreaker tune in radio overcast.fm google play 
or iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. Get that subscription to touchdownalabama.com. That's touchdownalabama.com, where you can be a monthly subscriber, a yearly subscriber. Also, get, get involved with TDA+. Plus. We got a lot of stuff coming. TDA+, Plus, including the Way It Is podcast, where you're getting never-before-heard stories by me in my 15 years covering Alabama football. Subscribe to TDA+, Plus, get that podcast the way it is. And we already got episodes one and two out for you. We're starting the groundwork next week, episode three. How I was able to call Devontae Smith, wide receiver, to be a star before anybody else did. Eli has been enjoying the podcast so far. A lot of people have been enjoying it as well. So subscribe to TDA Plus. Get that subscription, touchdownalabama.com. So you miss out on nothing on what's happening with your Crimson Tide. But gotta give a shout out to all of you, the Bama fans, for all the calls today, for all the chat and conversation today. Getting you revved up for the A Day game tomorrow inside Brian Denny. Let's see you all there. Gotta show some love to my man Eli Walk in the production studio. Till next time, folks, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children continue doing the right thing, fun thing, good thing, smart thing, legitimate thing too. Not be bored there. You get yourself those three party meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, on your man Stephen Smith. Enjoy the spring game tomorrow. Until next time, folks, you've been listening. Them own words.